Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, look, I can't get nothing done because I keep running into stupidity like this. Sorry. Stop listening. Stop listening. It's only 23 seconds. I could have redone it, but no, I'm so ah, pissed off at the stupidity right here. Please understand, this is a case where uh, two people, both supposedly from Africa and America at the same time, okay, whew, plaintiff brings a discrimination claim based on the fact that he and the minor are both African American. The court construes this as an equal protection claim. No, he's bringing a discrimination claim, you idiot. It says right here, discrimination. Sorry, I apologize. There are two ways for the plaintiff to state an equal protection claim. The plaintiff can state a claim for violation of equal protection clause by showing the defendant acted with an intent and purpose to discriminate, not equal protection, against them based on their race. Membership in a protected class. Now I want you all to pay attention. Intentional is the context, means that the defendant acted intentional in this context, excuse me, acted, at least in part, because of the plaintiff's membership. Excuse me, membership? Oh, I'm a member. I'm a card-carrying member. What the? Anyway, in a protected class. Alternatively, the plaintiff can state a claim by alleging that he was intentionally treated differently than similarly situated individuals and that there was no rational basis for the difference in treatment. Isn't that what he's saying? Isn't that what he is saying? Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Note the following. The plaintiff alleges that he and Chiron are African American and pr a protected status, and that the acts of the defendant, Gura and Brown, are due to intentional discrimination. However, there are no facts alleged to indicate intentional discrimination, but acts complained compared to be an attempt by the state court and the appointed counsel to address the custody of the minor given the contentious relationship between the plaintiff and the child's mother. The plaintiff's causery are conclusory allegations. That's why they don't want you to come to conclusions. They did this, they did that. You need to say, it appears that they were attempting to do this, or it appears that they were doing that. See, complained appeared to be an attempt. That's what they do to you. You do the exact same thing to them. Appear. So you don't come to conclusions. It appears, it is believed, and are not entitled to a presumption of truth and there are no facts alleged in a complaint which the court can reasonably infer discrimination, a discriminatory intent by the name defendant. What I want to show you guys is section 1985 prohibits private individuals from conspiring to deprive another person of their civil rights. That's section 1985. That's your best friend. The section applicable here would be 1985-3, which protects against conspiracies to deprive persons of their equal protection of law. The elements of 1985 claim are the existence of a conspiracy to deprive the plaintiff, plaintiff of equal protection of law and an act in furtherance of that conspiracy a resulting in injury. Now, what I am bringing to you all's attention is he brought a claim against the female brown and his claim pay attention here the action complained are clearly related to miss brown action on behalf of her client and her capacity representing him in the state court action mrs brown is not a state actor and the plaintiff cannot state a claim against her under 1983 that's a lie mrs brown is a public defender She's assigned by the state. Hold on. Let, let, let's let you read their, their articulation of stupidity. And let's rebut their stupidity because this individual probably didn't know that. We're going to start here. 
upholding dismissal of complaint based on the basis that a public defender is not acting on behalf of the country for purposes of 1983, representing the plaintiff's interests. Uh, excuse me. Look here, you morons. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you at no cost to you. Why? Because it's a constitutional right, so he is acting on behalf of the... Oh, God, the country. It's easily rebutted. But they keep coming up with all kind of ways to deny you a right. So what do you have to do? As I showed you in the video previously, Congress is whom you're to complain to next. And then when Congress doesn't do its job, pay attention, then you sue Congress. Okay. A public defender does not act under color of state law. Of course he does. Of course he does. Here's the reason why a public defender acts under color of state law. He's appointed by an officer of the state from the court, okay? He has an office in the state, okay? He has a lead attorney that represents the state, the lead public defender, under the attorney general's office. And then, lo and behold, he's appointed by the state. Look at that. A public defender does not act under color of law. Of course he does. He's appointed by the state. Says that they're providing you a constitutional right. An essential element of a claim under 1983 when performing a lawyer's traditional functions. Traditional. Look at they add that wonderful word right there. Oh, it's a tradition. Such as entering pleas, making motions. Of course a public defender makes motions. Objecting at trial. Of course a public defender objects at trial. Cross-examination of witnesses and making closing arguments. Aren't these traditional functions? Really? Court-appointed attorneys representing the plaintiffs in involuntary commitment proceedings is not a state actor. Why is that? Well, because somebody said it. But did they prove it? No, they just said it. A court just said it, and it was law. What do you mean? Well, the courts, they make all kind of statements, and once they make a statement, if you don't promptly rebut that stupidity, then they'll let those cases pile up and pile up and pile up, and because it was a circuit court and it didn't go to the Supreme Court, it becomes law. Wait a minute, the courts are not supposed to be making law. Well, they do it all the time. I know it's I know it's disingenuous and I know it's hard to understand, but this is the stupidity of these people. Okay? The conduct of an attorney, whether retained or appointed, does not constitute actions under color of law. Excuse me, it was a law that allowed them to exist. Of course they're operating under color of law. Why? Because an attorney can only be appointed by the court. He's an officer of the court. Look, come here. He's an officer of the court. There's an officer of the court. That means that he's a state actor. <laughs> okay? That's how stupid this is. Which is why it pissed me off when I was going through this case. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I do. I go through cases. That's what I do. All right. That's all I wanted to show you guys. The stupidity of state actors. Okay? The stupidity of state actors. All right. You all take care. Again, you're in a situation like this. You just have to be logical, people. Logic is not hard. Logic is so simple. What is logic? Logic is, hey, wait a minute. What you doing? Why are you putting that on top of there? Do you understand? The very question you're asking is, that don't make no sense. Logic makes sense. If it don't make sense, it ain't logical. Ella, he's not a state actor. He's not acting on the state. Well, then that means he's a state employee because the state's paying him. Of course he's a state actor because he has a contract with the state. Logic. If it don't make sense, it don't make logic. Okay, my rule since I was seven years old, if it don't make logic, it don't make sense. That's why I like Mr. Spock, because he was logical. So start using logic, people. Lord, have mercy. This is what they do to people. They just say things. And I'm promising you, I, I had somebody tell me today, says, hey, you know, a lot of people are not going to want to bring a complaint to Congress against a judge. They're going to be afraid. Do you see what the system has done? It has frightened the sheeple. Oh, 
no, it's a shame. A poor sheeple. I feel sorry for the sheeple. Lord, ladies and gentlemen, y'all have got to stand up. Y'all have got to stand up. Stop letting them bend your backs down so that you walk with your heads down. Start saying, oh no, I ain't giving up. No, y'all, uh -uh. we got a battle right here because I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep coming at you. You want to come at me? I'm going to get you for retaliation. You can't be angry. Can't argue. Okay. What I'm going to need, there is something here. Um, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. This is what I need right here. Okay. Section 1986. But I don't need Section 1986. I need this right here. Why here? Because, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm highlighting this right here, I want y'all to pay attention because y'all y'all gonna learn something right now. They gonna learn something? They gonna you gonna learn something, I promise you. Watch what I'ma do. I'ma copy this with citations and parenthetical citations. Parenthetical citation means they got parentheses. All right, I want y'all to pay attention. 1985 prohibits private individuals from conspiring to deprive another person of their rights. However, 1983 is conspiracy, not conspiracy, but deprivation of rights while acting under law. So 1983 and 1985 go hand in hand. The sections applicable here would be 1985-3, which protects against conspiracy to deprive a person of equal protection. Now to prove it, this is what this is the part you need to understand. When you get cases like that and they say to prove something, to state a claim under 1985, to state a claim, the plaintiff alleged sufficient facts to show deprivation of rights motivated by some racial, perhaps otherwise class-based, invidiously discriminatory amnesty behind the conspirators' actions. That's right. Now, I want y'all to see what we did, okay, what we doing. Because I ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke, but now I throw it down and make sure it's broke. <laughs> okay, Rockham, y'all don't know? Follow me right here, just for a second. It is believed, in order for the court to exercise personal jurisdiction over the arbitrator, it would have to prove that the arbitrators did not perform a judicial act. Since the record documents that the arbitrator's functions were wholly judicial, Holy judicial? Holy moly, back man! Okay. That they relied on the contract, made a determination based on the evidence presented to the arbitrator. It makes the functions of the arbitrator wholly judicial in nature. Thus, absolute immunity is given, not as an assumption. Uh, is a given, not an assumption. Just in case there were any doubts, note what other courts have determined with reference to this matter. And then look what we do. We put this why right here. There's a case right here granting absolute immunity for all quasi-judicial actions to arbitrators who heard case pursuant to contractual arbitration clause. There you go. Arbitral immunity is justified and defined by the functions to protect. Now, what we put here initially, oh, it's it's below. It's below the same as above? No, it's just below. you. Uh, judges are presumed to know the law. So they're supposed to know what I'm putting in here. So, fine. Y'all want to play? I want to play. You want to play? I want to play! Mother... Uh, we're going to be doing their oath of office. That's why this was so important. So, what's going to happen is section three, we're going to put you right here. Give me one more. One more, one more, more. Give me one more. All right. Then we're going to put you there, and then I'll straighten this up in a minute. Okay? That's what we're doing, y'all. So, I just wanted to bring this to your attention let you see how the courts operate, how there's a lot of double talk. At one point, you have a right to do this, you have a right to do that. And then the next thing you know, they take that right away. They take it right away? Right away, homie. They be like, you ain't got no rights, mother. And that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just wanted to bring you that. Have a good day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. I can't get nothing done because I keep stopping to tell you all this stuff.